<laughs> you look beautiful. Thank that you. That pink is popping. Thank you. Thank well, you. Well, welcome. Okay. My guest, Julia Jeffers, life's mission is to heal and inspire with her creative endeavors. She's a Caribbean American who grew up in the Bronx, New York, and her roots stem from St. Kitts, Nevis, and Guadalupe, and branch out to many places, including the Dominican Republic and England. Her love for the arts began at the High School of Performing Arts in New York City, and she's received her BA from Costa University. She's also studied abroad in Spain and France, and is influenced in both languages. As an actor, she's performed in many theater productions, such as Aha Moment, Butterscotch and Fudge, which she was nominated for Best Actress at the NAACP Awards. She has written and performed five solo shows, and her first solo show, Batman and Robin in the Book Down, has been highly acclaimed and was nominated for a Drama Desk Award and a NAACP Theater Award. Her latest show, Theo Pablo, won Best Actress and Best Play in the Hollywood Short and Sweet Theater Festival. She's produced theater productions, including her own solo shows, and on screen, she's appeared in over 13 films, over 20 guest star TV roles, and over 50 national commercials. Please welcome my guest, Juliet Jeffers. We are here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Love, Awaken, and Prosper. And today's guest is Juliet Jeffers, actress, director, producer, solo artist, entrepreneur, and so much more. And she's here with us. Give a hand of applause. Woo! <laughs> do you have your tea? You have something to drink? A nice glass of water? I do. Tea? I have some water. Yeah. Okay. Ready to go. Oh, look. Yes. We're, we're all, we're, we're doing our, our glass of water. Yes. Fresh. Hydrate. Hydrate. Mm -hmm. Yes. So welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And you look beautiful and radiant. Thank um, you. Thank you, my dear. So good to see you. It's been so long. It has been many years and I can't even go back. You know, I have a, I have three children. Um, I have um, my daughter and two from my husband's previous marriage. So three mm -hmm. children, but my girl is 14. Both my girls are 14. I remember when, wait a minute, both your girls. And my, well, my daughter is uh, my biological daughter, Bella. She's 14. And then my daughter from my husband, oh. a previous relationship. They're both the same age. She, the same age, and then our son is twelve, which is from his also from the same previous relationship. But they're my kids now, so yes. I'm a mommy of three. Yes, I remember when Bella was born. I remember. Yes. Yes. So, yes. oh, she was it's such so a is, baby. Yeah. Thank you. She she's doing great now, and you still no children. No I, children. You have no children. Okay. I Tell me. I have, I'm, I'm living with my boyfriend and he has two kids. Okay. Um, yeah, they are 16 and 12. And wow. okay. yeah, yeah. And, and we have a dog. So there you go. Nice. <laughs> That's three kids. Three kids. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, a dog is a child forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Well, great. I'm so happy for you. Yes. Um, let's dig in. I, I, I actually got in touch with Juliet because we just started, I just started being on Instagram, which I haven't been in a while. And mm -hmm. then she promoted her, um, a movie that she's in that's on Netflix, um, called Aftermath. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course I'm also doing my thing on Instagram as I, I'm doing a solo artist, um, workshop. And so does Miss Juliet Jeffers. She's also a solo artist coach. We have that in common as well. We're both solo artists. And we're both all of the above. I think we've done, we, we, we're kind of like do the thing. We're also island girls. 
I right? didn't know those. Yes. You're Jamaican and I'm Puerto Rican. Puerto well, Rico. I'm not, no, no, not Jamaican. So, so here's. Oh, the wait thing. a minute. Okay. Yeah. So I have the majority of my family is from St. Kitts and Nevis, right? And then I also have Trinidadian relatives okay. and I have Dominican relatives. So you remember, you remember my famous character, Tio Pablo, that was based on my, my great uncle okay. and in the Dominican Republic. So look so at I, that. Yeah, yeah. No Jamaican. I mean, I do a lot of Jamaican characters. Hey, I know this kind of pressure. <laughs> sure you do. No, really, I do. I was a parent of a child with severe ASD. I was 19. I had a little boy. He was nonverbal like Emmy. Oh, and the pot was big. 30 million. 13 million. Before the I government take half. half. Well, she don't have she papers. No forms of identification. No, no bills in her name. No address. No nothing. Me. So, you know what she do? <laughs> she gets your man to claim the ticket. Because he has his paper. It was a Monday. It was four Mondays ago. <laughs> she went into work. Where did she work? She worked over at that old home where Gilly's mother yeah, was yeah. at. Oh, yeah. yeah. She yeah. was at work. He packed up her bag. Okay. Yeah. Shut pack up. Pack up the whole damn place. No. Gone, 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 gone. gone. Cell phone and all. He took the money? Ah. Uh -huh. And I hear he take the daughter too. Which one? The big one. That's what it is, Dad. Yeah. I, I always thought it was Jamaican. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so funny because I also do. Uh, well, I mean, I also have in my family Dominicans, of course. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we've been in Puerto Rico forever, so we're Puerto Ricans. <laughs> exactly. So back to um, aftermath. Yes. Guys, okay. My girl here plays an amazing psychiatrist. And, but the show, the movie. It's a movie on Netflix, it's and a um, it's a, what is it? What do you what would you call this type of movie? It's a horror flick, like it's straight up horror flick thriller. It's um, it's it's and you know so here's the thing: they actually had a premiere, an in person premiere, um, which you know that def definitely the first one that I've gone to since this quarantine. And so we're sitting there watching the movie. Now, granted, a lot of people in the movie theater were people that were involved in the film in some way or another, but there were a lot of other guests as well. But I know the script and I was still like, ha, ha, ha. like I was so, you, the, the audience was like audibly gasping and screaming and, and I was doing this crazy thing where I had this like nervous giggle. So I was like, I was like, ha! <laughs> like I was just cracking up because I was so scared. Like leaning on my boyfriend. Like it was that kind of movie, roller coaster ride, you know, twists and turns and unexpected. Like it was, like I said, even though I knew the script, I was still like, yeah. what happened? I don't remember what's gonna happen, you know? And the way it was done, it was just shot so well that um that it just really it really gets you so it's it's a good film and i'm not just saying that because i'm in it I, and i i really believe you because i was watching it with my husband and i was on top of him i was hiding behind him and it's like what is that thing was that shadow <laughs> who the shadow <laughs> so it was i um i'm really not like a, a, a i'm a horror chick flick for zombie movies, like I love um, Walking Dead, like that's my show. I I love um, anything that I know is not real. I yeah. like because there's yeah. zombies I know they don't exist. To me, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. But to me, ghosts exist. I believe in ghosts. I mean, me you're from the island. Exactly. We we believe in them. I, I feel like um, you know. I felt like I experienced. Uh, the other world, um, otherworldly things, even in my life, like I actually have experienced them in my presence. So it's a weird story, like, to, like weird. But you know, I, 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 I believe in that stuff because I feel it. You know, I felt it before. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when I, so in order for me to not have it around me, I'm not gonna think about it or watch it on TV. So, but I did watch this one and thank God, you know, I'm not going to give it away, but it was a really good movie. <laughs>
and we did enjoy it. We did enjoy it. Tell me, and now um, as an actress, um, how did you get the part? Like, what what were the steps that went, you know, that got you uh, the part of the psychiatrist? So, can we tell them a little bit about what it's about? It was it's like a couple. I don't know how much you could share. Yeah, we're not giving too much away, but basically um, this couple uh, comes to me, I'm their therapist, and I suggest, which I think is really funny because somebody was like, they, all this happened because of you. Like, I suggest that they maybe need a change of environment. So Mm -hmm. they go to, um, they, they go away and they go to this Airbnb and it turns out that the house is haunted let's say you know I don't want to give away too much but okay. um and then you know we just see their journey through through that you know and okay. so I'm I'm in three scenes and throughout the movie and and basically we shot this in 2019 the plan was for it to come out in 2020 but obviously we know what happened in 2020 so mm-hmm. they delayed the release a little bit because of the pandemic and um but yeah, and I shot all of my scenes in one day. You know, they they arranged it so that they, you know, because it's all in the, all of my scenes are in the therapist's office. Yes. So they had, you know, just one setup and they just shot all three scenes, even though it takes place over the course of, I don't know how long, how many weeks. But, um, but yeah, so all of it was shot in three days. And, and it was, it was a self-tape audition. Just okay. one self-tape audition, no callback, no, you know, in person. I just did that. And and then they called and said, I got the job. So through your agency, then you, because a lot of um, auditions are now like self-tape, right? Especially, I think, even now during um, the pandemic. Um, and let's talk about the pandemic. Like, were, this still happened in 2019. Was it, did the, the pandemic happen or was it okay. happening? What was This is way, way before. Oh, okay, okay. I even did, you know, ADR work uh, after it was it was January of 2020. So this I did the ADR before, like right before the pandemic happened. What's ADR? So ADR. So this is um, uh, if there is for whatever reason, especially like if it's like an outdoor shop, but if if the sounds not perfect when you're shooting it originally, when they're doing the editing. They look at it and go, oh, we need to work on that sound. So, so you, you you know what? You reminded me, I should be doing the same thing. So um, anyway, Mm -hmm. uh, so ADR work you do when they're doing the post editing, the post editing work. If there's sound that needs to be redone, you do it in the studio as if you're doing voiceover work. And you do it in the studio and do that. So usually when, by the time they call you in for ADR, it means that they're, they're on their way to finishing the film. And, you know, so like I said, they weren't, okay. they decided not to release it in 2020 and they waited till now, which I'm, you know, everything happens for a reason and timing and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. I think there's a perfect time for it to be released. Awesome. Yes, it is. Um, it's it's a great film. I, I, I honestly, it's a it's a good one to just sit on a Friday night and watch. Yeah, with, and it, with with your boyfriend or husband. Or, yeah, right. Or, it's it's one that you want somebody to hold on to. Yeah, if, and, if you're scared of cats like us. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Yeah, uh, and because I, I actually have some girlfriends who are like, uh, "Oh no, I live alone. I'm not watching that film." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I get it. I get it. Go to somebody else's house. Yeah. Or, or do like right. a little, you know, people you trust meeting, uh, you know, like bring some people over to yeah. catch it, you know. Um, let's move on to uh, what your solo work. You are um, a solo artist. So you have a few solo shows that you've written under your belt. Can you describe them? I, I saw, I remember Batman and yes, Robin. So Batman and Robin and the Boogie Down, which is basically the boogie, down. the boogie Down. My brother and I growing up in the Boogie Down Bronx. And I, mm-hmm. it's about, you know, my brother unfortunately passed away. So I sort of share highlights mm-hmm. from our life from childhood all the way up until he dies. And- Uncle Delroy told me to keep my house shut. So I did. 
Besides, I didn't want to think about it anyway. I mean, I'd rather play Batman and Robin with my big brother. <laughs> Holy icicle, Batman! I can barely move! What's going on? Where? Frozen? Robin? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Carol Ann, it's me, Michelle. <laughs> Did you get your hair done? Wait, 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 hold on. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to your sister. <laughs> your brother says you're the wax, so stay the hell back. Your breath stinks, you need a tic tac. I actually, so that was my very first show, which, by the way, I'm going to be performing again on November 13th um, as part of the Black Voices Solo Theater Festival. I'll be closing the festival with my show. And, we definitely have to talk about that. Yes, I know. There's um, so much. We'll talk about that in a second. So, so yes. basically, I have, I have five shows all together. Go so, ahead, girl. Batman and Robin are boogie down. Then Chocolate Match, which is uh, based on my online dating experiences. I then, saw that one too. I love it. <laughs> and then Pan Girl, which is about a Trinidadian steel pan drummer. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have Tio Pablo, which basically the main character, well, not main character, one of the characters that stood out in Batman and Robin he decided we gave him a, a spin-off show so he has his own show Tio Pablo and then you know so he deals with his life and his wife and all that stuff and then lastly Judgment Day um which which deals with some basically a lot of the um, injustices that have happened to black people over the years and wow. so so yeah so so all of my shows um with the exception of Judgment Day they're all sort of like about personal personal lives right yes and um yes. but but yeah so those are those are my shows that's awesome you know what i as a solo artist myself um and i think you and i connected well also because we both talk about siblings who've passed away because i lost my sister through aids yes. and and i get to talk about her life and uh you know her being in an abusive relationship and me, you know, me just watching her going through that and then having to pass away with this illness. And, um, but the healing that happens in telling the story. So have you, I, I mean, I know the answer to this, but what's, what was your uh, evolution as your, you know, this is, I think, you know, when you do your work, what was the evolution in your growth in telling these stories of your life? Like, what was what happened to you? Well, like, one of the, one of the things you know, I've I've told this story before that you know, there's there's healing that happens on different levels. So when you start writing, the writing process alone is healing, and then yes. when you perform it, it's healing for you, but then it's also healing for others. Right. So specifically yes. people who have either gone through the same thing, they can relate, but still they, you know, I feel like almost all of us have experienced losing a loved one, whether it's through death or just some, you know, relationship that you, that you had and you don't have anymore. So, so for me, it's, it's, it's healing to see other people that, and, you know, especially come up to me. I'm sure you've had this this too, where people come up to you after the show and they say thank you, or you know, this happened to me too. And I deal with um, sexual abuse as well um, as a child, and so so that uh, was very healing as well. Yeah. And and you know, in the writing process, so so this is something that that was really interesting because I had in my show, it's it's actually two acts. So the first act, I'm talking to my brother's spirit, and I go in and out of different characters that we grew up with, right? Um, and then his spirit comes back, and he's talking to me. And so I remember when I was writing, and at this time, when I first wrote this, it was back in 2002, I think. And I had a computer at the time, but I wasn't really good at typing. Right, so I get somebody else to type the, the um, document, but I was handwriting. I wrote it all 
of the whole show I wrote by hand mm-hmm. on a you know like wow. a what is wow. it? I know, right? Mm-hmm. But you have to think, I'm writing my brother's part, yes. and I remember I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm writing, and tears are coming down my eyes because it's a very emotional mm-hmm. part, and you know. And, 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 but I just decided to just keep writing through it. And I'm seeing the tears on the piece of paper, you know, as I'm writing, writing, writing. And when I finished, I looked at the paper and it was my brother's handwriting. Oh my God. Oh my God. Girl, you just gave me goosebumps. I felt, I, I know what you're saying. It's true. I, I, I know, I know this. Because like, I know, like, right? Because it's like the spirit of your sister, yes. right? Is mm-hmm. there with you, is still there with you, but was there with you on the stage, every time you're yes. on the stage and the writing all like throughout the whole thing. And I felt that so strongly in that moment. And, and you know, and it's interesting, wow. because, you know, I'm going to perform it again you know, the first time I performed it was 2003 and I've been performing it a lot, you know, throughout, mm-hmm. but it's like, number one, it never gets old, you know, it's universal. It never gets story, old, you know? It's, yes, yes. Right? And, and, but also a part of me is just like, oh, I get to play on stage with my brother. Yes. You know? I get oh, to nice. On stage mm-hmm. again. And so I'm really looking forward to that. That's so beautiful. I understand. I I actually did my my first show was handwritten, and um, the story just like I just threw it up. It just came so easily. Like I knew what the characters were gonna say. I like I I just it just came through. I don't know about the uh, definitely was very healing and very emotional. So I understand that part. I don't know if I experienced the wow to observe the handwriting, but I totally, totally understand and uh, and believe that you channeled him and in such a way, and and his words just came through you, and that's I believe that those are his words and not yours. I 100% believe that. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And um, do you believe that? <laughs> Oh yes. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not crazy here. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I remember that when I saw it, I, you know, I just, I, I freaked out for a second because I was like, oh, God. and then like I was like, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like is he here? But, but it was, you know, after the, the feeling. I mean, you know, we're talking about ghosts and spirits, right? Mm-hmm. So after the feeling of like, oh my God, that's his writing. Then there was this kind of like comforting kind yes. of feeling yeah. of like, he's with me. Mm-hmm. He's with me. So I'm good. You know? I love that. A oh, girl, you know, make me cry up in here. I Come know. On. I, I, we got makeup. Give yourself the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But no, yeah. And that is, you know, when, Okay, now your students like we'll, well, I want to just go into it a, a, a little bit because I, I, you know, I'm working with some people who are bringing up their stories and wow, such amazing stories that are coming through. And um, the part in, tell me how long, as far as them pulling it, pulling out the story and you getting the story out, like how long did it take you? And um, did you take writing class before, a playwriting course? Um, like, what was your process to get your story out? Why did you decide to do it? Like, why, like all of that information, like, mm. why did you say, I'm going to do this and, um, uh, or figure out how to do this? Like, cause some artists don't, it, it's a hard thing for an artist to do. Like, um, it, it's a particular artist <laughs> to be like, I'm gonna write my own one woman, one person show, you know, there's millions of actors and maybe a handful of solo artists, right? Like it's not something that we see a lot of. No, 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 you have to be, you know, there's an there's an element of cray cray. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little dash of craziness. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but, you know, and, and, and certainly, you know, anybody who gets up there and, and does a solo show is courageous, right? Yes. So there's mm-hmm. that. Um, 
I was someone who I always loved characters, you know, since like watching Carol Burnett as a kid, you know, I just loved doing different characters. Uh, and I always, and I'm always, uh, as a kid was, I was observing people and, you know, in New York city, it's just a melting pot of, of types of people to observe. So I lived around, you know, a plethora of, uh, of, of, cultures and and personalities and all that so and I absorbed it you know and uh so I had a thing for characters I also was at the point in my career where I was feeling like you know things were sort of slow and I wanted to create my own avenue and and so I decided and, and when I was younger I saw Whoopi Goldberg's one yes one. I love so I was definitely right I was inspired yeah. by that and I thought to myself one day one day I'm yeah. going to do that and so I so it's so then it just got to the point I was like okay now it's time now it's time and I had a director who's my cousin who was my writing mentor my director he produced the first show um and so he was the one who gave me the idea he's like why don't you do it about your brother and I was like that's a good idea, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and so I started writing. I, I did uh, this festival. It was like a one woman show competition called 15 Minutes of Femme. Mm -hmm. And Steve Silverman produced that. And I did 15 minutes of Batman. I hadn't written the rest yet. I just had 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, that's when I knew I was like, okay, I'm going in the right direction. Let me finish this show. And literally, I want to say six months after I did that, I had my full length show and I and I wow. performed it. So wow. so the writing came over time. I can't really yeah. say I sat down I, I sat down and and I wrote it from this time to that time. Mm -hmm. It came in pieces, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and now that I've been writing solo shows and I teach people how to develop their solo shows. I can write a solo show like this. Like it doesn't take long for me to yeah. write it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think, you know, when I'm working with someone, usually if you have a goal in mind, if you say, I want to put my show up by this this amount of time, by this day, then it's easier because then you have a you know a timeline. And uh, but but some of my clients, they finish their show in three months, some take a year. You know, it just yes. really depends on how much you're working on it. Yeah, it is on the um, definitely an individual um, trip. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's different. You know, just like the being an actor and all of that. Um, so you are directing solo shows now. Um, talk about your person. Um, you're directing a show called Queer with Jair Bula, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the full so, title is called Queer, Drag, Drugs, and a TikTok Clock. That's the full title. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's performing right now in the Fringe Festival. There's one more show left on Thursday, the 26th of August. I'm um, like, are we in August? Yes. So August 26th at 7.15 p.m., and that is uh, Pacific Standard Time. So it's, it's through the fringe and he, yes, he's a client that I've been working with for a while. And we were working a little bit on, he had another solo show and I was working with him a little bit on that. And then we sort of switched, we changed gears and started creating this one. And, um, and it's basically a coming of age story. It chronicles his life um, coming out as a queer, as, you know, gay, and so it, it, it really, it touches on what it really, he has these demons, you know, these two forces that he's dealing with um, and in his mind, you know, and uh, and so just, it, it's a great story, just universal story, but specifically for, for the LGBTQ community to really, that they can really relate to it because, you know, the coming out is, is you know, talk about being courageous is another courageous thing to do and and living your truth you know it's just it's so important and he's fabulous he's amazing in it i can't wait to see my scene some of your pictures hopefully i will be sharing those pictures here um on the interview um 
tell me, uh, you directed this, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So tell me about that hat when you changed hats as an actress and then now you're the uh, director. Was is it like a hard thing to do, or was it like did it come very simple for you? And, and is this the first um, uh, play that you direct? No, no, I've directed several shows. Um, last year, for example, and then we said we'll talk about Black Voices in a minute, but the Black Voices Theatre Festival that I curated last year was the first year, and I think I directed seven or eight shows in that festival. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. What? Let's right, talk so, about Cray Cray. Cray Cray, exactly. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's... the. Now, my kind of directing comes from being an artist, right? Mm -hmm. So I so I take them on the journey that I go through as as a solo show artist. But now the difference is I have that, you know, that outside eye that I can look at and be like, okay, you know, this works great here. This doesn't work well there. You know, I also helped develop his show too. So I was in 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 that process from the beginning with him. And, and so for me, I feel like directing is like, is, is like painting a picture, you know, mm -hmm. you just you have this, can the stage is the canvas. And I, I see the, 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 the whole show as part of this canvas. And I start to sort of paint, you know, and yes. it's just like, oh, this looks good here and then let's flow here and let's and I also and this is something that I, I I tell my clients in in when directing but also in in creating the shows that it's like this um you're taking the audience on a ride an emotional roller coaster but also just a, a journey um and so in the journey there are different beats there are different um rhythms they're just so you're you're you, you know because if the, if you're just going just like this it can get quite boring one person on the stage for an hour right so you gotta yes. take you gotta go through here do this that da, 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 change things up you know so um yeah. i love directing i love it i love it too like that's actually like um my next journey in in my artistic career to get be focused more on directing let's talk about your um the black voices and how did that come up like um tell me how you came up with this idea and this is a an incredible incredible thing that you're doing you know yes. so so um, well, go ahead so so it wasn't my idea Okay. It was um, uh, Brian Rasmussen who runs the White Fire Theater in Sherman Oaks in Los Angeles. He, I've done, I had done some shows, some of my solo shows with him. And right after, you know, during the pandemic, after George Floyd's murder and the protests and all of that, he came to me and he said, I'm thinking about putting together a festival called Black Voices. Would you like to curate it? So I didn't even have to think about that. I was just like, yes, yes, done. Let's do it. And wow. so we did. And, and, and Brian had something really great going on at his theater because he was live streaming before the pandemic happened. So he already had um, a, a great handle on the whole live streaming world. And so the quality of his shows is just superb. And it just, it looks great and sound quality is great. And so he was one of the theaters, a few theaters that was able to survive during the pandemic. It was making money and like, you know, actually wow. up and running wow. because he did everything, you know, safely, right? It would be one person on the stage, the performer, and then maybe three people in the audience and they were all three, they were all tech people and live stream shows. So I believe we did about we had about 30 performers and uh, uh, last year. And like I said, everything was done safely and we were able to have theater, like theater still. And it was also the perfect combination of theater and film because every performer had to then adjust their show for the camera. So if you're using the full stage, 
you're you're now having to use part of the stage and knowing that there's a camera there in the middle right everything had to be sort of catered towards the camera because no one's in the audience so you know how if you do a show and you you know connect to the audience like this you yes connect, you couldn't do that because oh, it's wow. like someone looking at you live stream would be like who are they talking to i know there's nobody in the audience you know <laughs> so, so everything had to be you know to the camera and you had to make sure that you didn't get out of you know you have to know your mark like in film right yes yes so, so it was it was great to be able to do that and so we're so this is the second annu annual the festival goes from September 10th through November 13th and um tell and me it's like on the weekends every day and and where it, can people get the information give me so, all of that mm -hmm. okay so it's whitefiretheater.com and that's theater r e at the end Okay. And we are still accepting submissions for the festival. So that's another thing. If there are any Black artists out there who have a solo show, you can either do it live and, and have um, an audience, an in-person audience, or stream it or both. And if specifically for people who are in the LA area or who are willing to fly out, but if you have a show, if you're not in the LA area and you have a show that's already uh, filmed and the quality is good, you can also submit because we can just stream that for the festival. Um, so yeah, so we have um, Sammy Wayne who is opening the festival on September 10th and his show is called Lord Have Mercy on This Nappy Headed Child. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <Another show. laughs> That I that I directed and and he he is, was in the festival last year so he's bringing it back this year okay. and um and so just a, a really great lineup that we have and and like I said it's still open for submissions so if anybody's interested definitely submit yes awesome um and how are you guys handling the pandemic along with work um being in a theater so I know it's going to be streaming live Mm -hmm. So are there any, um, do people have to come in vaccinated or do they have to get their, um, you know, show that they have, you know, like show negative. that they're clear, negative? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so the, all the performers are required to be vaccinated. Um, if they are not, then they have to show a negative test 48 hours before the show. Now, the thing that's tricky about that is like, if they are positive, then of course, then, you know, how are we, how are we gonna do the show, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we, we really prefer that you are vaccinated. And then everyone who comes to the theater live has to, same thing, either show your vaccinated card or a uh, vaccination card or show proof that you have a negative COVID test within 48 hours. Wow. Is it like this in California? Because it's um, it's not like that here in in Atlanta, like where people are, we're going to the movie theaters and sitting, you know, next to each other. You are know, you wearing still, masks? Are masks required? People can wear a mask and it's not required. They're not policing you. They're not telling you put it on. Um, I am not have not experienced that yet, and um, I don't know because of the rise if things have changed. For instance, um, I was going to Starbucks and I would sit there, have my coffee in the morning, and well, not coffee. I'm drinking tea, tea or coffee, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to get off the coffee, yeah. but um, TMI. But um, they stopped allowing people to sit in Starbucks again. So that, so there are changes happening. Mm -hmm. So that just happened this past last week. I'm like, what? And like, you know, and I was enjoying my sitting down and doing my writing and my computer with my cup of tea, but they do have the outside, mm -hmm. you know, um, space that's open and you could sit out there. And, um, if it's not raining, it, it's fine, but you know, well, that's happening. So I really don't know what's going on in, in LA surrounding COVID and public. And so now I'm hearing this from you, which is yeah. like really new. The thing is, I mean, it, it, what's happening is, so in, in terms of theater and film, right? Let's, so film and TV, let's say, I was up for a job that shot out of the country. 
And so they said that you either have to be vaccinated in order to do this job or be willing to quarantine for 14 days. And then of course, show proof of a negative test. So it's not, they're not saying you cannot do this job at all if you're not vaccinated. They're not, I mean, it might come to that at some point, but right now they're not saying that yet. And, um, you know, and the same thing with theater, it's like, there's an option. It's gotta be one or the other, negative test or the vaccination. Part. Wow. So in the theaters, is it all theaters or is it just this particular theater? So are, are there some businesses who are for it and or some businesses who are? No, the, I only know about this theater and then the theater where uh, Jair is performing. All of Fringe, <clears throat> all the Fringe Festival, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. You have to show your, your vaccination card or uh, or a negative test. For 40 so, and, then, and then even, and then in the theater, you have to wear your mask. So whether mm -hmm. you're vaccinated or not, you have to wear your mask mm -hmm. inside the theater. And that's how it is in just any way you go now. Indoors, you have to have a mask on in the grocery mm -hmm. store, wherever you go. Yeah. Um, Cause yes, of course my children go to school and they have to wear their mask. And I always respect um, people um and businesses who make me you know wear a mask i have i am not vaccinated i do not like wearing the mask mm -hmm. i feel like um and 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 i know it exists i know it's out there but i feel like oh, i also have um the power to and and knowledge as far as taking care of myself and my and my body and um i'm just you know i i claim i'm divinely protected and i'm immune you know so that's I just walk around the, you know, life like that, and um, that's what I choose to do. But I always respect uh, respect everyone's, you know, their own opinion. You know, that's why we are here on the planet, and um, and just be peaceful about it. You know. <clears throat> yes. But course. definitely, when I go to my children's school, I wear the mask. You know, I, I'll wear the mask. But um, it's very interesting the world that we're living in as far because, um, you know, us as solo artists or being an actresses and just, you know, creative people knowing that we need uh, large groups. We, you know, we think we need that, right? Like, like to have large groups of people around to, to show our, our you know, to do our, our performance for. Mm -hmm. But we know now, look at this, like, this created that the internet that you can reach even more people maybe right oh yeah via the that's, internet and that's the thing about you know when we did the festival last year that was the beauty there because we were like oh we're not limited to this small theater that has like 80 seats you know i had my my friends in spain were able to see my show my family in england and in the caribbean were able to see my show and they had they'd never been able to see me in person Wow. doing a solo show so they were able to do that because we were we have this beautiful thing called live streaming yes you know? yes yeah. that is um and that was the the magic that happened you know mm -hmm. within the ugliness of this pandemic right uh, the world connecting in a different way um please um you know what else let me see i'm looking at the time it is for um it is it's 407 and I know you have to go Juliet. Um, this has been such a wonderful um, conversation. Um, I really enjoy enjoyed everything that you shared with us and I'm hoping that my audience uh, was inspired by you and also learned a lot from you from um, the fact that you have five shows. I didn't even know. I knew you about the two. Mm -hmm. But I kind of knew maybe about the um, one or one, two or three, maybe. Right. And, right. and um, just everything that you're also doing in, like, I feel like the, the work that we do as artists is also, is like you said, uh, a healing type of work, you know, and, and helping um, someone pull out the, their stories out of them and, and find, have them find healing. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. then and then also healing their audience members, healing the world through the World Wide Web. Because mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that I tell them, like you could do this solo show and you could record this and yes, you could stream it. <laughs> that's, yeah. you know, because now that's a possibility. 
Exactly. I, you know, it's a beautiful, yes, for actors who, um, you know, in between gigs, it's like, no, you don't have to wait for your agent to call anymore. You know, once you get a solo show, once you create it, then you have a tool, you have a product, right? You're a great example of that, you know, writing a book and and having the, and so you can actually do speaking engagements. And I mean, I, I was just sitting at home, like, and the comfort of my own home and made money from streaming my show. And then I did a Q and a on zoom and made money and all, I didn't awesome. even have to like leave my house. You know what I mean? Like yes. that's, that's the beauty of, of what we're doing right now as artists. It's a way to make money, a way to have a product that you can use. And you know what? I realized that I have this conversation with people. It's like, you know that you, you being an artist, you're an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You know that, right? Like they mm-hmm. don't, um, um, a lot of people, um, and even me, you know, starting out, you know, we think we're just actors, you know, where I'm an actress, I'm a writer, you know, I'm mm-hmm. an artist, right? No, right. you're an entrepreneur. Like you have a business card, you have a, you know, now you got to create your pages, your website, and um, you you better trademark your name <laughs> if you don't know that, right? And, um, but the little things that you learn as an artist, as far as selling yourself, because you're always constantly selling up yourself, you're, you're the product. And mm-hmm. then once you have your show, that's just an added um, you're just adding to your work, you know, is your show, then is the book of the play, then is the video, right? Then is speaking engagements, then maybe teaching, right? Like, it's like, it's like, it keeps growing and growing and growing. And mm-hmm. you're just um, growing your, your, your business. Mm-hmm. And, and that's how we, it's, it's like, it's, I mean, yes, we're creatives, but in a, and I think it's an advantage to be in a creative because you can be, you know, you can get colorful and, and do beautiful things. Right. But, um, there, there are two different heads that, that business mind, and then that, you know, that creative side and, and that's just comes with the territory. It does. Cause you have to understand the business mm-hmm. of, of being, you know, of selling <laughs> and cause it is, it is. And, um, and that's what I have to like, I always talk to, um, I always share that with um, my clients. Um, Do you talk about that? And do you have them? I know we have to leave, but you know, like, do you share how to, you know, package their product? Yeah, for sure. It's, and it is, you know, that's a really great word, packaging, branding, you Mm -hmm. know, all of that, it's just, it's all a part of it. And it's very important. I mean, a lot of people, when you think about social media, there's some people who are not really fans of social media or they're not on it a lot, but it's like, we gotta go with the times. That's that's what's happening now. And so it's about marketing yourself on there. And, and you know, if you're, if you're I've, I've heard this before and, I, and I've seen it happen where if there are two people that are up for the same role, right? And they've narrowed it down to two people. Uh, let's say if it's a, a film, TV, maybe not so much in theater, but film and TV for sure. And um, they can't decide between the two. They're like, oh, this person brings this, this person brings this, and they're both right for the role. And I don't know, they're so good. Da-da. They may possibly look at the social media uh, presence that you have. Because if you, if this, you know, the same talent, right? And one person has a hundred followers or is not even on social media. And the other one has, you know, over a million followers. They're probably mm-hmm. going to go to one else. Cause it's all, cause you know, when you're doing film TV you have to, as a producer, the executive producers they've got to promote that. So it's less promoting that they have to do if they, if this main character already has a following. Yeah, you know? that's true. Yeah. That's very, very true. No, it's like mm-hmm. it's uh, some people are just like oh, social media. Oh, you know, you know, but it's a part of it. Unfortunately, it that's where we are today is the other part of the work. Yeah, the work that you thought yeah. that you didn't have to do, but it's yeah. there, and and we have to do it. And um, 
Yes, well, yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, this has been such a great, again, a great conversation. You look beautiful, my friend. I, I, I will love to see you. I wonder if I can make a trip to California and catch that. Um, maybe I'm gonna have to take a, a, a test. <laughs> but I can catch it online, you know what? Right, right, right? Exactly. exactly. I'll catch it online. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, let's... Um, talk again i i know that this oh you i don't think you shared when is um bula jair coming out i i um, did but i'll say on it thursday again. i'll yeah, say yeah, it again yeah. yeah so this thursday um august 26 at 7 15 p.m uh pacific time and 10 15 uh on the east coast and you can get tickets from hollywoodfringe.org and his show is called Queer, Drag, Drugs, and a TikTok Clock. And, and then also the Black Voices. You can go to Black, uh, no, you go to whitefiretheater.com for the lineup. If you want to submit as an actor or if you want to just see what's going on and for sure see my show. My show closes out the festival November 13th. So, okay. And they will catch Aftermath on Netflix. Anytime. After Netflix, I also have a movie called Noise in the Middle, which is on Amazon Prime, and I'm starring in that film. And Ooh. it's another, it's another thriller. It's not as horror flicky as as Aftermath, but it's a suspense thriller. Um, so that's on Amazon Prime. Noise in the Middle. It's on now. Yeah, yeah. Girl, you busy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I'm yes. gonna go check it out. Check it okay. Out. Well, everyone, thank you for watching and hanging out with me here at Love Awaken and Prosper. If you like the video and the interview, please press like. Please follow our friend, my um, Juliet Jeffers on IG, right? And on Instagram. Yes. That's Juliet Jeffers. Yes, I will definitely have her link um, in the bottom description and. Thanks again for watching. I love you. God bless you. And bye-bye. Thank you.